Piriformis syndrome is something that is often cited as the cause of your sciatic pain, that this small muscle in the buttocks is squeezing on your sciatic nerve, but this misses the mark and so often leads people down the path of doing silly stretches that do nothing to address the underlying problem. In fact, they're often making it worse. In today's episode of the podcast, we're going to break down piriformis syndrome, what's really causing this fake sciatica, so you can understand and start moving forwards to address the real causes with a structured plaque. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Michael Fatika, the lead osteopath and spine specialist here at Back in Shape. We help people around the UK and all over the world fix their back pain from home and get back in shape for the long term. And today's topic of piriformis syndrome is a question that we frequently get new members and comments on our social media channels asking about, it, and it's time we put the issue to bed. What piriformis syndrome is trying to tell you is that a small muscle, one of many in this little region here, is responsible for your sciatic symptoms because it is squeezing on that sciatic nerve. And the reason this syndrome has come about is because of an anatomical peculiarity in that some of us, our sciatic nerve actually pierces the piriformis muscle itself on the way out of the pelvic girdle. Others, it partially pierces, and for many, it just runs next to. But the most important thing to understand is twofold. Number one, did you have this particular variation screened for when you had the diagnosis that you know, in fact, your sciatic nerve does go through the piriformis muscle? And more importantly, if it did, it's always done that. So have you, for the entirety of your life, noticed that whenever you engage those hip muscles, you contract those hip muscles, you get shooting, radiating symptoms down the leg. And if they didn't before, perhaps this syndrome is starting to fall apart. The simple truth with piriformis syndrome is that you didn't have those tests to look for that anatomical variation. You haven't had constant pain your entire life whenever you contract your left buttock, for example. And quite frankly, you have no plausible reason why one tiny muscle is the one that randomly has decided to tighten up and now is squeezing that sciatic nerve because it's tightened at such a level that it's cutting off the circulation to that nerve and pinching down on it. So this all begs the question, that's fine, what's the real cause? Throughout the entirety of the body, nerves run close to other structures. They don't run in a vacuum like they're in space. They run next to muscles, between muscles, next to bone, between muscles and bone, etc. And there are only a few circumstances and areas in the body where they can be compressed in a significant way. And most of those occur in the spine. And when it comes to sciatic symptoms that you're experiencing from this supposed piriformis syndrome, it's going to be these lower two segments of the lumbar spine, L4-5 and L5-S1. As these nerves leave these sections of the spine, that is where they are vulnerable to being compressed and irritated. And what's worse is that you often won't necessarily get back pain at the time you have this injury. It is very common for people to have sciatic symptoms in the leg with no back pain to speak of. The reason that this area is so peculiar in the lower back is because the entire margin of this hole where the nerve runs through is occupied by bone. It's not, as is in the case of other areas of the body, bone with stretchy muscle or skin tissue on the side, or muscle with stretchy skin tissue on the side. It's bone in a tube. So when you injure, say for example, the disc and it bulges, inflammation collects in this small space relatively quickly and sends signals out. These could be pain or they could be signals to certain muscles that are controlled by that section of the spine. When we have any injury to these sections of the lumbar spine, it is perfectly reasonable to get buttocks, thigh, lower leg, and even some symptoms into the toe, depending on which exact level of the spine is affected. But those L4 and L5 segments, or the L4-5 and L5-S1 segments of the spine, happen to control the buttocks muscles, and that includes your piriformis. So if we have any kind of injury to those levels, not only can we get the pain down into the leg, but we could also get symptoms of dysfunction in the muscles that are controlled by that segment of the spine. So it is perfectly reasonable that the piriformis, as well as many others, are going to be tight, tender, maybe have knots in them, maybe be sensitive to touch, and maybe have some trigger points. And I won't bore you guys with the detail as to whether or not you're actually pressing on the piriformis, how you really know whether it's the piriformis that's sore or the glute you're poking and prodding aggressively that's laying over the top of it. That's a topic for another video. But the simple truth is those muscles are all likely to or can reasonably be affected in the case of this lumbar issue. There are two big issues with the piriformis syndrome diagnosis. The first of which is that often with 
we're focused on a muscle being the problem, which means we're not even acknowledging that the problem is arising in the lower back. And so we're spending no time whatsoever dealing with rehab that is going to improve the health and integrity of that lumbar spine. So we're doing nothing productive. And that's the first problem, which is the lesser of the two. The second problem is that the actions that we're often taking to stretch those muscles, target the piriformis, etc., often frequently involve rounding of the lumbar spine, such as in positions like doing the figure four stretch. We're stuck on the floor, pulling on the knee towards the chest as we're doing that stretch to target the piriformis muscle, and we're actually rounding the lower back in the process, making the problem worse. And the main reason that these provide relief, I would argue, is nothing to do with the fact that it's stretching the piriformis, but more the fact that we've got a lot of inflammation in this lower back, and as we stretch like so, we enlarge the holes and therefore decrease the pressure in the lower back. And if you've seen any of our other recent videos on flexion or forward bending or rounding of the lower back recently, those explain why this is such a problematic movement if we have a lower lumbar injury. So with all that said, now we understand that piriformis syndrome is a fake sciatica and actually we need to be focusing on the lumbar spine. What is the fix? That's what we're gonna get onto next. Now, whether you've got true sciatica, i.e. the symptoms are going the whole way down the leg, or we've got kind of a pseudo sciatica, partial sciatica or sciatic type symptoms, these next steps are gonna be important. So if we get onto part number one, the relief work, that's where we need to start. Our relief strategies need to address the actual problem. So there are a couple of things we can do here. Number one, doing proper stretching of the hip musculature can be helpful because it means that the hips are moving a little bit better so the lower back doesn't have to be involved in as many of the movements. This provides relief, providing we do it in a way that doesn't involve the lumbar spine, like I mentioned earlier with the figure four stretch. So our glute, hamstring and hip flexor stretches are fantastic options to provide moment to moment relief and improve the hip mobility to a degree. They have limited reward, but they're still worth doing. And so doing those with a neutral spine is really important. Decompression strategies, such as the bed decompression and the towel decompression, help actually target and take load off the injured section of our spine so that it can get a bit of respite. And we can do both of these things multiple times a day. Finally, we've already touched on the fact that this area can get a lot of congestion in it around that herniated or bulging disc or area of stenosis in the spine. And so using things like contrast bathing can be really helpful to manage the excessive inflammation that builds up around these injured tissues and that is going to be aggravated and flare up from the daily activities we're doing in the early stages of recovery. Now we've got a full follow along routine, a back pain relief routine, which also works for static. It's the same stuff because it's the same problem, just slightly different symptoms. You can check that out, link down in the description and watch that after the video. The second part of the fix is about doing our rehab work. This is building strength and control back into the spine. This is using exercises such as those that we discussed in a recent episode of the podcast called the Core 5 for Spine Health. These are exercises like the dead bug, the marching bridge, the squat, the hip hinge, and the step up. Exercises that teach you how to control the spine that can be done in a very easy level to learn how to do the movement safely and effectively to control and protect that spine better so it can try and heal, and then can be done at higher levels steadily over time to rebuild strength and integrity to our spine and actually strengthen up those sections of the spine again that are injured. And there is a full podcast as well as many videos over on the website. You can check that out again, link down in the description. The third part is often overlooked. It's all well and good spending our time doing our rehab work, but we have to have the element of education to understand the things that we've discussed at the start of this video, the importance of maintaining a neutral spine. And that's why we do the podcast. Every week we release videos. We've got well over 100, 200, maybe even 300 videos. We've also got detailed articles that go alongside all of those, as well as over 1.3,000 or 1,300 videos on the YouTube channel to help you guys understand how backs work, how they fail, and how we can get them better again. From simple things about how you should do certain daily activities, to correct exercise education, to understanding the neutral spine, what this even means. It's all there on the YouTube channel. And if you need more help and support and education, we have the full Back in Shape program. This is probably 60% education with about 40% of the actual doing of the exercises and the strategies and the routines that I've discussed in a little part in this video. And that is the best way to get the most complete approach. Relief-based work to provide strain reduction on our spine on a day-to-day -day basis, multiple times a day if we have the time. 
actual rehab work that's going to strengthen up and literally change the tissues that are injured in our body as well as the surrounding muscles and improve our coordination on a day-to-day -day basis and the education that supports and informs this process and gives us the education to actually apply what we're doing within that half an hour 45 minutes worth of exercises to the other 16 hours of the day so we're not doing great work only to undermine it for the rest of the time and that education is what ultimately helps you understand that things like piriformis syndrome don't exist They're they are misdiagnoses of a deeper problem. They send us off in wrong directions. And this sort of stuff is another example of that classic muscle spasm diagnosis that so many of you struggling with lower back pain get given only to find six, eight, 12 months later when you end up having that MRI or that imaging that you get told it was actually a disc bulge or herniation. It was a disc bulge or herniation at the start because all of those sorts of injuries have muscle components, muscle symptoms to them. It's very, very common to get that muscle tightness, but it is not the primary cause. Hopefully this episode of the podcast has made a bit of sense to you. It's put some wrongs right, and you can now move forwards with a better understanding of how to get your back pain better. If you did find this video helpful, or you know someone else that's struggling with their piriformis syndrome, their sciatica, or their back in general, then consider sharing this with them. And until next time, have a great day. Thanks for watching.